got to be about six inches away from the stucco to make that initial blow, there was still this sensation of, wait, 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 I'm not ready. Whoa. For Steve Horsfield, the demolition of the 141-year-old Simpson United Methodist Church in South Minneapolis. Thinking about all this stuff we've done over the years to make sure that doors were safe and secure, you know, to make sure that the roof wasn't, wouldn't leak. Is an ending and a beginning. One of the things that came out of that, that congregation is Simpson Housing Services, is the agency that I work for. This structure served, served its time and its season, and it's time to make space for the next thing. That next thing is expected to look like this, a short-term 72-bed housing facility for people experiencing homelessness. That's to include 42 units of permanent housing. Which is a dire need for folks who are coming out of experiences of homelessness. What we really need in our community is shelter, that is low barrier in terms of easy to access and with a lot of services on site. Experts say in Hennepin County, families seeking a place to live are hurting the most. The latest shelter report shows 401 families are now in shelter, almost twice the number from a year ago, an increase of 144 families since July. At the time, that was already the highest level in the county in a decade. We're seeing an unprecedented uh, increase in family shelter, which means that there's children, there's more children than ever that don't have a safe, stable home right now in Hennepin County. And so absolutely we're concerned. Shelter advocates say the increase started with the lifting of the eviction moratorium. That was the last addition over on that side by the alley. Which allowed people to stay in their homes during the pandemic. Horsefield points to the economy, the lack of affordable housing, even the start of the school year as factors. Coming into August and September, families want to make sure that kids are in stable housing, are in communities where they have access to good schools. Horsefield says his nonprofit is trying to help. And a program that provides transition housing for about 300 families. Yeah, those are the organ pipes. You hear those uh, clanging? Who typically stay about two years while they're getting stabilized. We have prevention services. The Office to End Homelessness is working to form a team of housing case managers. So that if families are in trouble of rent, that we're able to quickly help connect them with rental assistance. If families are going through housing court, we have uh, representation at housing court to keep them connected to their housing. Think about all the, all the things that people did to Make sure the building was habitable um, to come to this point is just, it's crazy. I had no idea I'd be showing up to, to witness the, the final stages of the structure coming down. I'm really grateful to be here. Horsefield hopes these are all steps in the right direction to help those experiencing homelessness. People are still suffering. And so if you're, if you're already in a situation where you're having to make hard choices between paying the electric bill or buying groceries, you know, that, that situation got a hell of a lot more challenging in 2023.